saddest moments on divorce court. Then about a few minutes later, it's like boom, 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 shaking. I'm like, Todd and go open the door. So when he comes in, he's like, yeah, I don't have no respect for me. I'm like, babe, I forgot. I just, oh, you forgot? You saw me sitting in the car, blah, blah, blah. He's just blowing up. That is a dirty thing to do, to take somebody who was vulnerable in a weak situation. You don't know if they're in an abusive situation. You don't know what's going on at their house. Whether you've been together for six months or six years, breaking up with someone is never an easy decision. It's heartbreaking to witness couples go through the pain of divorce, with their emotional stories bringing tears to the eyes of those in the courtroom. If you're curious about some of the most heart-wrenching moments witnessed in divorce court. This morning, I heard a disturbing story from a veteran who served in Kuwait. He is getting treatment for the sex addiction that his wife says is tearing their marriage apart. It's understandable, of course. When you're in love, your ultimate goal is to salvage your relationship no matter what. But despite this shared desire to make things work, what could have possibly led the wife to ultimately seek out a divorce and take such a devastating decision? He will seek out different females via social media. You know, how was your day? Are you having problems in your relationship? And then it'll slowly Just evolve into in something bit of this, very bit of that. sexual. One of the phrases that he always seems to use is, hey, how you doing? And then all of a sudden it'll go, I'm about to take a shower. What are you doing? We are going straight to the source, and I'm talking about Justin. What does he have to say about the state of his relationship? So here's the deal. Justin's been feeling like things aren't quite right in his relationship lately. But is he the only one causing trouble? Not according to him. He thinks there's a major communication gap and his wife is too controlling for his liking. But can you really blame her? After all, Justin's been cyber flirting with other women. Other than the sex addiction, because I'm gonna circle back to that later though, what other relationship problems do you have with your wife? Communication, not listening to each other, and just controlling. Whoa, hold up. Felicia just dropped a bombshell. She thinks Justin is joyless. Can you believe it? I mean, how can someone who's always so flirty be devoid of joy? Do you think he only shows his fun sign to his online admirers? According to Felicia, Justin even walks around like a grumpy old man. Meanwhile, Felicia's all about spreading good vibes with her jokes and playful nature. This is like a clash of personalities, and I'm dying to know more. Firstly, I just wanna say, my name is Felicia. It means happiness. I'm a really happy person. I like to play around. That's just how I am. I feel like he has adopted this permanent, what I call, stone face. My stone face is only when I'm around her. It's a defense mechanism that I already feel that we're about to argue about something. Something's mm. about to come up that we're not agreeing about. It looks like the judge is siding with Felicia in this drama, but do you agree? Felicia might be a bit of a micromanager, which might not be the most thrilling thing, but at least she's caring. The real problem here is Justin and his obsession with porn sites. I mean, let's be real, that's a serious issue and something that we all need to be concerned about. So what do you think? Let's chat about it. Let's move on. You got other issues to deal with, you know? Yeah. You can't stay off the porn site. <laughs> Don't worry about whether or not she knows it's the 24th or the 25th. Hold on to your seats, because this case had a heartbreaking conclusion. The judge delivered a stern message to Justin, making it crystal clear that his behavior of flirting with vulnerable women was unacceptable and could lead to even more trouble for them. Imagine if their abusive husbands got a hold of those texts. The women would be in serious danger. It's no surprise that we all stand in solidarity with the judge on this one. Let's hope this serves as a wake-up call for Justin and anyone else out there who thinks it's okay to take advantage of vulnerable people. That is a dirty thing to do, to take somebody who was vulnerable in a weak situation. You don't know if they're in an abusive situation. You don't know what's going on at their house. You don't know what how devastated they are going to be because their self-esteem is probably already low. You can be sick if you but don't be a predator. Imagine pouring your heart and soul into a relationship, going above and beyond for your significant other, only to be met with an icy cold shoulder and unbearable silence in return. One-sided love can be one of the saddest things imaginable, especially when the person you adore doesn't appreciate all the effort you put into the relationship. It's like trying to fill a bottomless pit with love and affection, yet it never seems like enough. Marshall even gave blood to keep them together, but Lauren claims angry outbursts and the silent treatment are pushing them apart. Lauren Givens and Marshall Gray have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toler to resolve. Marshall has some serious anger issues, but what's the cause behind it all? Is it because he served in the Navy for seven years and developed PTSD? 
or is there something else going on? Whatever the reason may be, there's no denying that anger can be a major roadblock in any relationship. Lauren even shared a crazy story about how her natural instinct to lock the door caused a huge blow up between her and Marshall. Me and my daughter go upstairs, go in the house. Now I lock it. Then about a few minutes later, it's like boom, 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 shaking. I'm like, Todd, go open the door. So when he comes in, he's like, yeah, I don't have no respect for me. I'm like, babe, I forgot. I just, oh, you forgot? You saw me sitting in the car, blah, blah, blah. He's just blowing up. I'm like, oh my God. Let's dive into the juicy details of Marshall's relationship troubles. It all started when Justin, a talented writer, began feeling suffocated by his partner Lauren. She just wouldn't give him the space he needed to get in the zone and work his writing magic. But that's not all. When Justin didn't comply with Lauren's demands, she would punish him with the dreaded silent treatment. Talk about a communication breakdown. She's looking for a memory card or something for her phone, and she goes, do you still have that memory card? And at the time, I'm like, I don't really have time to You don't want to break that. your concentration. Yeah, and because I didn't just jump up and do what she wanted me to do and drop everything that I was doing, she leaves the house. Get ready for the jaw-dropping soda saga, folks. You won't believe your ears when you hear how far he was willing to go to protect his fizzy beverage. Imagine this. His wife wasn't even allowed to offer it to their guests. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. When Marshall realized his beloved soda had gone missing, his rage knew no bounds. He stormed out of the house angrily and vowed to get a new bottle of soda at any cost. He loves orange soda, okay? So we understand that, but my aunt came over. She wanted something to drink. I pour him a glass. He comes in the kitchen and sees that. And he's like, I just wanted to give her some soda. He's like, oh God quickly grabs his keys, storms out the house, and leaves. And then he comes back a few minutes later with a whole new soda. The courtroom was tense as the judge struggled to make sense of the couple's complicated issues. But then an electrifying question emerged. Why did they want to marry each other in the first place? Their love and adoration for each other was crystal clear. Yet here they were, standing before the divorce court with uncertain futures. It was a heart-wrenching sight to witness such a beautiful bond being put to the test. Will they eventually tie the knot again? Only time will tell. I just love the way she bats her eyes at me. I know she truly, truly cares about me. It's given. 90 seconds, go. I love Marshall. He is so brilliant. He has this mind to where he was able to sit and teach himself how to do this complicated Maya program, which is computer animation. Mm -hmm. The roller coaster ride of a court case came to a thrilling conclusion. As the two lovebirds passionately professed their love for each other, but. What if the judge decided that they couldn't get married? It was a nail-biting moment. Let's see what the judge has got to say. I like you people. First of all, you just look good together. <laughs> you're both handsome, you're both, both mature, you're both thoughtful. I don't know who took these tests. We're gonna take these tests and put them down over here because I don't know who took them for you. <laughs> I think that you would both do well to learn how to manage your anger. Are you ready to dive into the drama and emotion of forgiveness? trust and redemption? Let's explore the age-old question of whether it's possible to forgive a cheater. As the saying goes, where there's smoke, there's fire. And Ashley has had her suspicions about Amari's fidelity from the beginning. But is her intuition correct? When Amari claimed he was celebrating his birthday with his family in Atlantic City, little did Ashley know that he had planned a rendezvous with his ex. Talk about a gut punch. His first birthday, mm -hmm. like when we were together, he told me that he was going to Atlantic City to spend his birthday with his family. I discovered that he had a Facebook that I didn't know about. I went back to the time that we first got together just to see like what was going on and ran across posts that he posted saying that he spent Atlantic City, I mean, spent his birthday in Atlantic City with his ex. Whoa, hold up. Did he just try to use the death of his mother as an excuse for cheating on his girlfriend? That's not only a low blow, it's downright despicable. And let's be honest, nobody's buying that kind of nonsense. It looks like the judge saw right through it too. Poor Ashley, she deserves so much better than this kind of deceitful behavior. I just lost it, I blacked out. My How mom did that get you in bed with another woman? So and I think it's pretty low, by the way, that you bring your mother's death out here but as an excuse to have a it. woman with your child at home and you on your phone with an app hiding videos with another check. I think that's, I woo! Oh boy, things are really heating up in this drama-filled court case. Amari is desperately trying to justify his questionable behavior with some seriously lame excuses. 
Can you believe that he actually called the police on Ashley just because she was talking to someone else during their breakup? But wait, it gets even worse. Ashley has revealed to the judge that whenever they fight, Imari tries to take something from her, like her engagement ring and even her truck. That's just outrageous. He takes, tried to take something away from me. Like he got mad and took the engagement ring away from me. After this happened with the other guy, he got mad and I have a truck that's in his name. I paid for the truck, I made the monthly payments for two years and when he got mad, he called the police and had them take my truck that I paid for away from me just because it was in his name. When Ashley poured her heart out to the judge about how this guy would tell her he loves her and then cruelly take away her vehicle, leaving her stranded and unable to take care of her kids, it was clear that she was in excruciating pain. Can you imagine the heartlessness of someone who would do that? It was so bad that the judge had to resort to asking Amari to come up with something negative to say about Ashley. But even he was stumped. You'll take away my vehicle. How am I, how am I gonna get back and forth to work? How am, I, how am I gonna provide for my kids if I can't get to work? Tell me something that's gonna make me mad at her. You can't. Exactly. Anything. I'll take anything. Does she have a nasty attitude? Yes. No, no, this, no, 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 yes. no, no, no. This guy actually called the cops on her four times. How in the world did she put up with that for so long? It's obvious this dude has some serious issues that just can't be fixed. Sorry, but no one's buying that excuse, Amari. It's time to get out of there and find someone who will treat you and your child the way you deserve to be treated. Four times? Mm -hmm. I got arrested. For what? For keying my truck. I didn't really file a report, so But you called the police, time. they came and took yes. her away. Mm -hmm. With, With my mother kids of there, your child. In front of my kids. Yes, I, and I felt bad. I called, no. He felt so bad. Say, I felt, felt, I felt, felt bad. I called to check up on her to make sure she was okay. After witnessing the heartbreaking situation between Amari and Ashley, the judge finally spoke up and held nothing back. With a solemn tone, the judge declared that Amari is nothing but a trifling and cruel man, while Ashley is a fool for ever being with him. It's a puzzling mystery why she ever wanted to be with him and still loves him, but it seems like their relationship is now officially over. You are no count and no good. You cheat at will. What you doing with him day two? He ain't no good, he's foul, he's untrue. You deserve better. You got a parent now. This matter is adjourned. <laughs> Well, marriage is a difficult road to take, but what if your partner tends to make you mad for the silliest things possible? In this case, Miss Thomas brought her marriage into question because she was tired of her husband's changing and almost psycho tantrums. Let's hear more from them. He has a tantrum, that he goes temper tantrum, that could go from down here, you know, zero, to the water point he's saying hi to God. That's mm -hmm. how high his temper can go within two seconds. The plaintiff told some rampage incidents of Mr. Manigold getting so crazy one time over a broken glass that he threw a toilet brush against the door. He then said that he got mad because it was his favorite glass. But one time, Mr. Manigold also broke the CD while watching a movie with his wife and told her not to touch the DVD player without his permission. She is worried about this behavior for their small children. Five minutes, I thought he, everything was fine. He was quiet, everything. The next thing I know, I hear a big boom against my door. He done threw the toilet brush cleaner that you clean it. Mm -hmm. He threw it against the door. No reason, because he's mad that he can't figure out what happened to whatever it was. So I'm saying like, you can't do that. Miss Thomas shared more stories about their fallout times and also said that he treats her like a kid and corners her all the time in arguments and yells at her. And when she doesn't listen, he starts throwing punches at the wall. The defendant said that her attitude is not good towards him, and when he wrote a letter to express his feelings and apology, she blatantly ripped it in his face, to which Miss Thomas agreed and defended that he always writes the same things and never changes his own behavior. I have a pack of papers like this saying the same exact thing. If you're not gonna change, I don't want no letter. I want action. Well, what does he say in the letter? It's the same thing. Oh, I'm sorry. I know you deserve better. I I, I shouldn't have done this. I'm a, I'm a change. I'm tired of hearing that. Show me. Miss Thomas. Thompson then told his lie to everyone that once he lied about a family member coming over who would only meet him. And when she asked them, they refused their arrival. Later, she found out that he was meeting with a friend and ex. Mr. Manigold said that her behavior and attitude stop him from sharing and being truthful to her. I want to tell her the truth about certain things, but I can't because her reactions show me different. How you tell me, how you going to tell me that you want me to be honest with you, but when I be honest with you, you still catch an attitude. Okay. That's not fair to me. I got you. I got you, Mr. Manigold. We've been talking about you a lot. Even though the judge had made sense of their testimony somehow, 
Still, it was not helping to settle down this marriage conflict. So she figured out that Mr. Menegold is suffering from a dual personality and needed to seek help for his anger issues. Meanwhile, Miss Thomas needs to learn about how to make a household into a marriage. As both were responsible, Judge Lynn credited them as valuable life tools. The Helping Book. Hopefully, this could save their marriage from their own toxic issues. You can make a decision not to punch a hole in the wall. How you alter your vision of what you are and what you need to do. It's called My Mother's Rules. This I'm giving to you. I will say no further. There will be no recovering this matter. It is so ordered. Oh.